Stardew Valley has a lot of mods. Some of these mods are so popular that there are mods for mods. Specifically, Stardew Valley Expanded has 4 million downloads on Nexus mods. For reference, the game itself has 20 million downloads last we knew. So yeah, it's a pretty big mod, and a lot of people have been more than willing to add to it. Those mods are what I'm going to be going over today. To clarify, I'm not going to be talking on mods that are simply compatible with Stardew Valley Expanded. These are mods that need to change or were made specifically for Stardew Valley Expanded. Also, if you want to know more about Stardew Valley Expanded itself, I do have a video for that. We're going to be talking about the additive mods solely, assuming that you already kind of know Stardew Valley Expanded itself. But before we get into it, just because I'm asked a lot, Ridgeside Village is compatible with Stardew Valley Expanded. They take place mostly in different areas and they don't cross over too much, so it's perfectly fine. Before we get into mods though, I gotta say, the mines have left me wanting. It's a small taste of combat, and yet I just want more. On top of all that, we have all of these mysterious ancient races that just intrigue me so much. Luckily, I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid now has over 600 champions, and all of those champions come from unique factions, each with their own history in the world of Teleria. Personally, my favorite faction has to be the High Elves. Their backstory is pretty great. Their homeland, Aravia, has been around for thousands of years. It survived the fall of the Lizardmen Empire, it helped humans form into civilizations, and it defeated the Orcs when they formed a huge horde and attacked the entire continent. They weren't always thriving though. The Lord of Darkness, Suroth, convinced a bunch of elves to turn evil and attack the kingdom. The Civil War nearly ended the elves, but Aravia survived, rebuilt, and now it's stronger than ever. Personally, my favorite high elf has to be the Jingle Hunter, because I mean, come on. I'll stop gushing now. This month, Raid's got a non-stop schedule of special events and activities, including Forge Pass Season 3, which has some amazing rewards on offer, including a limited edition artifact set. If that's not enough, Raid's bringing out some new champions, along with some awesome-looking champion skins for the incredible Madame Ceres. On top of all of that, later this month, Raid is giving everybody's favorite champion the upgrade he deserves. Finally, the Death Knight is becoming a legendary champion. We've all been waiting for it, and I can't wait to see how the ultimate Death Knight turns out. This is the best time ever to get started in Raid, and if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion Virgis, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one experience boost, and one ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All of this treasure will be waiting for you here, and it's that easy. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. So first mod I want to start off with, yes we're starting a little boring here, language mods. The game itself has been translated into, I believe, 16 different languages. If you check Nexus mods, you'll find all kinds of language mods, French, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, I know is their minimum, there's probably a dozen others, so if you're worried about it not being translated, you should be good. So Expanded has a few new fruits and vegetables. If you remember from the original game, wines and honeys and all that have the same exact sprite no matter what fruit it's from. There's a mod to fix that in vanilla. There's another mod that does that for Stardew Valley Expanded, made by Midnight Chord. As you can see, I have this wine here, which is not the normal color. We have Amaranth wine, which is from the default game, and Joja Berry wine, Joja Berries being exclusive to Stardew Valley Expanded. I do want to note though, Honeys surprisingly all kept their default sprite, despite the original mod changing Honey sprites. So that's the only thing that will be a little hard to tell, but Wines and Jarred items, Pickled items, should be able to be distinguished upon now. There's another mod I want to talk about that, while it's not exclusive to Stardew Valley Expanded, it was fixed to include the fish of Stardew Valley Expanded, and that is Fishing Made Easy. This mod basically adds every single customization option you could ever ask for for fishing. And using the generic mod menu, you can open up the menus right here, Look at all of these options. You can make fishing easier or more difficult, or just easier specifically on Sundays if that's how you roll. If you want to, you can make all fish available at all times of day during any season. You can make every single fish have the exact same spawn rate. You can put legendary fish in ponds. You can recatch the legendary fish. Just an endless amount of options and, you know, 
I know you all abs- that's cute. <laughs> I know you all absolutely love the fishing minigame. So I think being able to tune it to your liking is beneficial, we'll say. Oh, have I got a mod for you. You might notice someone's missing. If you didn't know, in Sorry Valley Expanded, it opened up this little pen around uh, the dog, which is actually named Dusty, and you can come in here and pet him, but he's missing. Well, there's a mod called Dusty Overhaul that allows Dusty to walk around town of his own volition. On rainy days, he'll probably be in his pen, and in winter, he actually goes into Alex's house to chill with them. Look! He's just going around. I love it. Like having a dog just walking around town. I don't know. I don't know why I love that so much, but it's just so nice. And they actually have future plans. I don't know if these have been since canceled, but it's still there on the mod page. That if you marry Alex, Dusty will move into the farm with you, which is exciting. Imagine two, two pets, two pets. Love this mod. Fantastic job on it. So Expanded adds quite a few marriage candidates, Sophie, Olivia, Victor. However, there's one character that personally, I found it a little odd that she wasn't an option. Where did she go? Huh? What? <laughs> where, where's that? Oh, she's gone, gone. Oh, she said bye. <laughs> I'm leaving. Uh, here she is. This is Susan. In Expanded, she's just a regular NPC that you can gift things to. Uh, she goes up to 10 hearts. However, the mod Susan Marriage allows her to be romanced. So now you can see that she only goes up to 8 hearts because you need to date her to go up to 10. I'm always in favor of older marriage candidates, so I am in full support of this mod. So Stardew Valley Expanded makes the world a lot bigger, you could just about say it. It kind of expands it, can you believe that? Uh, so it can be a little bit hard to get around as efficiently as you would in the vanilla game. So the mod Aurora Vineyard Obelisk plans to close that gap. The Aurora Vineyard, if you didn't know, is in the very back corner of the map, so it can be pretty hard to get to. So this mod has added both a totem and an obelisk that unlocks whenever you unlock all other obelisks. The totem is craftable once you hit level four foraging. And I mean, as you expect, it allows you to warp to the Aurora Vineyard. This is a place that you'll be sprucing up as you go through the story of the game. So you'll be back here quite a bit. It just makes things a little bit easier. The only downside is if you don't have any warp totems to go anywhere else, you kind of do have to make the pretty long walk back if you do do this doo-doo. So there's a mod that a lot of people kind of go goo goo gaga over. That would be the anime portraits mod. You all love it. It's one of the most downloaded mods on the entire site. What if I told you that there's a few expansions to this mod to include a few new characters? Now, every single character from Expanded unfortunately is not included. As you saw earlier, Susan does not have a portrait for her. But the important ones do. That's right. Sophia is now anime. Oh, no. I will say, though, uh, I want to go really quickly over how to add those in because it doesn't work the same way that the normal anime portraits mod does, where you just slap it in the mod folder and you're good. For these, you actually have to go into the files of Stardew Valley Expanded, and I'll show on screen exactly how you do that. Basically, you're going to be given a few files. Replace the Sophia.png with the new Sophia.png. And you might want to like make sure to replace both her makeup and her regular PNG file because I don't know how to make her not wear makeup. I basically just renamed the PNG that I was given and replaced the with makeup. I'm assuming there's a setting somewhere, but I could not find it. And lucky for all of us, Olivia is included. She also has an anime mod, thank goodness. The only other character that has a anime portrait that is Stardew Valley Expanded exclusive is a mermaid and i'm assuming that that's a character that comes in a little later in the story i have no clue who it is though oh evelyn oh how they massacred my girl <laughs> all right i've got one last mod for you one of my favorite mods in the entire game 
is the seasonal characters mod. What a character wears adds so much to their character. It tells you what they're about, what their personality is, and this is essentially three more chances to show it off. So here's Sophia in her summer outfit. Uh, we'll come back in winter real quick and we'll see what that looks like in winter. Actually, now I think about it, I'd like to check out Victor and uh, Olivia. Olivia, actually, this looks like this is her summer outfit or maybe that specific sprite was never changed. Um, Victor isn't wearing his uh, blue sweater, which he us usually wears. Um, she's still animated. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I don't, hey, I don't know. Here they are once again. Here is Olivia's winter outfit. It's more of a black dress. I will say also they do have different outfits for indoors and outdoors. So if you catch them outdoors, they'll probably look a little different. Victor's got a really cute sweater. Oh, I love that. I love it. It's just, you know, there's so many times in game where it's like you see someone outside and they're wearing, you know, a skirt, a short skirt. And it's like, come on now. I also should mention, you'll notice that the regular characters are not wintered up. This mod does not actually require the original mod to work because there is obviously a similar mod for the vanilla characters. Of course, I wouldn't recommend it without that mod because then, you know, half your characters aren't swagged out during winter, but you know, all up to you. You know, I've never, I've never looked at the vineyard in winter before. Yeah, it makes sense. It's, it's all dead. And here's her indoor. Uh, winter outfit. Look at that. Oh, that's not great. Uh, I'll excuse myself. Uh, if you catch her outside, she'll actually be wearing a hat. It's extremely cute and I love it. Anyway, that's all I had to show you today. There's tons of other mods that you could also add, but I, these were like the highest quality and kind of universally loved ones that I can think of. And as I said before, these aren't all of the mods that work with it. These are just the ones that add content specifically for Stardew Valley Expanded, and so I wanted to give special attention to them. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you all in another video, and good night.